Honorable Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Datuk Zulkifli Abdul Razak, Rector of IUM, Respected Honorable um, University Management Committee members, uh, Datuk Rahim, uh, Cik Raja, Datuk Ahmad Zailan, Datuk Wan, Senior Officers of the University, Fellow Colleagues, Brothers and Sisters, both in Gomba and Kuantan Campus. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah the Almighty for His grace and mercy that we are gathered here this morning on this blessed Friday, 12 April 2019 bersama 6 Sha'ban, 1440 Hijrah. We are, very, we are getting very near to Ramadan, inshallah. And uh, we are gathered here today this morning for this Leadership Talk Series number 1, 2019 with our Honourable Rector uh, Tan Sri Zul. And we would like to thank uh, Dr. Tan Sri for gracing this event. Okay, untuk pengetahuan semua, Leadership Talk Series ini adalah signature program. It's a collaboration between MSD dan PMA. Uh, dan ia diadakan tiga kali setahun. Dan uh, we like to thank uh, Datuk Rahim for always uh, support PMA dari segi penganjuran program-program uh, di peringkat universiti. Okay, uh, for your information, we have live streaming uh, for our colleagues and uh, friends in um, Kuantan campus. And I think without further delay, I would like to invite uh, Honorable Tan Sri Zul to start the session and uh, deliver your message. Please welcome. Terima kasih. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. And a very good morning. Uh, saudari Pribadis, uh, rakan-rakan IUM, uh, hadirin yang dikasih. Saya terlebih dahulu mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih dan juga melafazkan syukur kepada Allah SWT kerana kita dapat berkumpul untuk membincangkan satu uh, aspek yang saya rasa penting dalam pembangunan universiti. Yeah. Uh, I'm also very delighted to know that this is a signature program of IUM uh, to talk about leadership and anything to do with uh, managing an university because I think we need to be reminded all the time of what needs to be done in order to not only move the university but also to move ourselves up together with the university. Uh, today what I intend to do was basically to go briefly into what I understand leadership is all about. Um, this is not as easy as it sounds. Bila orang bercakap tentang leadership ni, normally uh, they have got a very fixed idea of what leadership is all about. Yeah? As you will see later on, uh, leadership is always a very fluctuating sort of uh, concept. Uh, it varies from time to time, from people to people, from culture to culture, and therefore there is no one definitive way of looking at what leadership. And you need to be constantly running after what is happening and what the latest development is all about. I think that's one of the biggest challenge as far as, as far as understanding leadership is what it's about. Uh, and for us Muslims, I think there's another definition of what leadership is all about. Uh, most of the leadership modules, no most of the leadership models that we receive, all are Western-centric in nature. They are not, not that they are wrong, but I think they are not complete. They didn't have the Islamic soul, neither did they have the Islamic worldview uh, to take along. So it becomes our duty to put this in and to make sure that it is very much a very much uh, what we call a holistic idea of what leadership is all about. Yeah? So let me start by, by, by looking at leadership in transforming institution. I chose this topic because I think this is where we are going. Mula um, Ibesu, when we will be meeting uh, with a group of uh, researchers and head of departments and how to move on the IIUM roadmap, we are actually talking about how to transform this institution. And I think uh, the whole idea of leadership becomes a very important role in trying to push that through because it needs a consistent, a very uh, dedicated and committed sort of style in getting people to understand what leadership is all about. Now, <clears throat> I would like to start by saying that, you know, Leadership is something to do with balance and balance of life. Yeah? Uh, I want to start with this, that if you can fulfill all this water, food, sleep, health and peace, you probably have got what leadership is all about. Yeah? It's only when you say, benda-benda ni tidak ada, separuh tu tidak ada, then I think the question of leadership becomes 
a very important issue. So you can look at all over, all over the place now, in Venezuela. Right? You can see why leadership crisis, because this is not fulfilled. Yeah? And sometimes part of Malaysia pun begitu juga. Why there's a leadership crisis, because this is not fulfilled. The whole idea is going back into what do we want to achieve at the end of the day. For this institution, it's the same thing. Are our staff or our students having these five elements so that we can claim that we have got a good form of leadership? It's a very basic way of trying to judge where leadership is all about. Right? So when you have this balance, then I think we, we can say that we are now moving into a kind of understanding what leadership is all about. But generally, this is what is the issue. Although we talk about balance, although we talk about these five things that is important, but the last survey that was done by Harvard Business Review talks about why great leaders are in short supply, and this is what the conclusion statement is all about. Yeah? They got the leaders are inundated with increasing perception of incompetence, greed, and frivolity at the expense of the govern, the tax, and the manage. So I go back to the first slide. Yeah? The govern, the tax, and the manage, these are the people that we are supposed to serve. These are the people that we are supposed to you know, work for. And if they don't have this thing that we want to give them, then we are not doing the leadership role that we are supposed to do. And this particular context is the same juga. Incompetence, greed, and frivolity. And I think this, again, you look around us, you find that this is something which is not uncommon. Yeah? Leaders today are inundated with all these issues. Kalau dia saja yang, kalau dia saja yang, 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 yang terlibat, yeah? They are incompetent, they are greedy, and they are frivolous. That's okay. But it is the expense of the govern, the tax, and the manage. For us, it's the expense of the students. For us, it's the expense of the staff. For us, it's the expense of the whole university community. And this is where I think the whole crux of what leadership is all about. It has an effect, and the effect is quite direct in this particular context in trying to understand what leadership is all about. Yeah? So if that is the issue, then where do we go? Where do we go? And this is where I think I want to make, uh, to give you a kind of understanding what leadership is all about. Yeah. If you look at leadership, it is a theory that starts from a very simple theory of a great man. In other words, some people have been said to be born a leader. Yeah. And that theory evolves from time to time. In other words, there is no one fixed idea of what leadership is all about. Right? To cut the story short, I want to illustrate two types of leadership. One is a laissez-faire leadership. In other words, you can do whatever you want. There's not much control over it. Yeah? And then the other one is a transactional leadership. Now, because of the laissez-faire leadership, we begin to understand that when you look at le the, the type of leadership, we find that this is a leadership which is not effective. There's a fair leadership, it's not effective, it is very passive in one sense. Yeah? And because of that, we evolve into another theory called the transactional leadership. You see the movement from one type of leadership to another type of leadership. Yeah? But still here, it is still not an effective leadership, and therefore people are still looking for what sort of leadership do we need to evolve next. And this is the idea that I was telling you, we need to constantly find what is the best for a period or for a situation as far as leadership is concerned. So if I come here in IIUM and if I try to bring a leadership style in USM, maybe it's not, it's not competent, it's not suitable. Yeah? So we must adjust as to where we are according to what we are at the moment in time. Okay? Why this transactional leadership now? What is transactional leadership? Transactional leadership is what we do every day. Yeah? entails an exchange between the leader and the followers, right? The follower receive a certain value outcomes, wages or awards, when they undertake activities directed by the leader. So Dato' Rahim asks you to do something, there's a transaction. And you say that therefore Dato' Rahim gives you something, you must have something in return. It's a transaction. Yeah? Based on self-interest, cost-benefit processes where condition reinforce is used. So it is not so much of trying to do things, but it is very much of what I can, I can benefit from this. And this is where I think this whole idea of transactional leadership becomes a big question nowadays. Yeah? So here you are. 
two people, we transact. I say, I say, okay, you do this for me. You say, yes, but I want this. That's the kind of leadership we have. Nowadays, very prevalent in many situations. The transactional leadership. And this transactional leadership can take different point of view. This we see in the last few years. Yeah? I can transact by using money. And this is where the whole idea of corruption, the whole idea of you know, uh, unethical practices becomes a big issue as far as transactional leadership is concerned. It's become worse when you look at media. Suddenly, I've got money in my bank. I don't know where it comes from, but it's part of the transaction that we do. Nobody knows how the money gets transacted. Right? Now, because of this, people are saying, no, this transactional leadership is not the kind of leadership that we want. And then we begin to evolve into another kind of leadership. This is what we see now, the transformational leadership. Yeah? Malaysia talk about transformational leadership banyak. Sumon that they transform, economy that transform, government that transform, yeah. Uh, but it is just transformational, but behind it are all transactional. Yeah. Kita kata je transformation, tapi behind it are all transactional. You see this. You get some of the projects that we see as far as as far as that's concerned. But the whole idea is basically we need to evolve to into another form of leadership. And this is called the transformational leadership. We will hope that we can actually put in place better than the transactional leadership. How is it better? If this is transactional, le transactional leadership, the transformational leadership talks about, yeah? It occurs when one or more person engage with another in such a way that the leaders and the followers raises one another to a higher level of motivation and morality. Here, the word mor mor morality does not occur. For the first time, when you talk about transformation leadership, the word morality comes into place. I think for a long time, 1978 was the first time the word morality being put in as far as leadership is concerned by a person named uh, Burns. Yeah? Now, because of this, the leadership style, therefore, we need to compete. I need to compete with Dato' Rahim to make sure that who among us can raise this level of morality. Yeah? We need to compete all the time. How can you raise this level of morality? And certainly for an IIUM, this is a kind of leadership that we want. That we compete with one another. Takira Sapa, that we want to raise this level of morality. And that morality becomes the kind of motivation that we have when we go to work. Yeah? A very different kind of idea of what leadership is all about. Now, let, me, let us expand on this in the question of how do we raise one another to morality? Yeah? So in other words, we have a kind of a leadership that talks about how do you help other people around you? Yeah? And in that context, I want to bring the word pemimpin in. Kalau kita kata pemimpin, this is our word for leadership, we talk about holding hands and walking together. Yeah? Very different idea of a leadership that somebody will up in front, then you just follow him or her. Pemimpin means kita pegang tangan, kita jalan. There is no somebody in front. We work together in this whole idea of maufakat or whatever, you know, that we work together and we walk together. There's no one leadership in that particular context, in the context of position. Yeah? And this is what it is. The motivation, therefore, is to raise everybody up and move everybody up at the same time. And that is a kind of morality that we want to bring in. Kita buat ini kerana apa? Jadi ada tuntutan bagi kita. Right? It's our amanah to make sure that everybody moves up at the same time. And this is what transformational leadership is all about. Yeah? So, because of that, we begin now to ask what sort of, transform, what sort of leadership practice do we have in any organization? Yeah? The short of it, of transactional leadership we do, they are immediate and short term. Yeah, as compared to this one, it's long-term and very futuristic. Right? The mission is command and control. Here is about empowerment and enriching people. Yeah? It's about status quo and in incremental. It's about challenging the status quo and getting into a quantum leap. This is where the transformation is, is all about. Yeah? 
It's about self-preservation. I want to do this because I want to stay in power. Okay? Here is about future orientation and spreading justice around. It's not about me. It's about everybody else. Yeah? Here is the ideas of authorities as compared to the authorities of ideas. Yeah? It's not the authority that's important. It's the idea that's important. So it doesn't matter it comes from whom. If the idea is good, then the idea is good. The idea becomes the authority rather than the authority of the ideas. For that, you have to have humility. Otherwise, you're going to start with arrogance. Because I'm the rector, therefore I say, it must go. Yeah? Whereas here, it says that, okay, the idea is good. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Let's accept the idea and let's move on. Right? And last but not least, it's a question of extrinsic. And here's a question of intrinsic, yeah? where we begin to look at what the heart is all about. That's the other thing that I want to emphasize. To you. So you need to decide now where you are. In the kind of leadership style you manage your department, or you manage what sort of leadership style you want to, to take on. Yeah? I hope we will all opt for this. Yeah? And the leadership style become kind of different in this particular respect. Now, this thing moves on again. Yeah, let, me, let me try and demonstrate. Yeah? Uh, transformational leadership and sustainable leadership need a little bit wrong. I will not talk about that now. Uh, but at the end of the day, you'll find that the transformational leadership will creep into what we call the charismatic leadership. Right? Because it's so transformational that these people have got a kind of a quote-unquote iconic features onto them. These are some of the examples that I give you. Yeah, people like Gandhi, people like uh, Mandela, people like uh, Martin Luther King, people like Muhammad Ali. What is common about these people? These people do not compromise on principle. Yeah? Gandhi pakai baju ini je, kain cukin dua ni. Yeah? When the British says, I don't, I don't like your dressing, they kata, sir, I dress because of you, otherwise I'll be rather be naked. They tak kata, never mind, so I'll buy, I'll buy my suit tomorrow when I join you. These are people who are very adamant with their principles. Eh? Muhammad Ali, to fight the, uh, the, the Vietnam War, he refused to. He said, I'm not, I'm not going to kill other people because of you. They stripped him of his title, that's okay. But Muhammad Ali is, is still the greatest. Yeah? These people do not compromise on, on position. Any, 27 years kept in prison. I forgive you. And he became a one-term president. He could have been a president for a lifetime. Nelson Mandela. But he became a one-term president. And these are the people who actually charismatic because they don't compromise on principles. I think this is something that we need to be clear about. As far as principle is concerned, we don't compromise. The moment you compromise on principle, on your leadership behavior. Yeah? But you must be clear of what the principle is, is all about. Right? Now, the contrast to this is what I call the, the, the two things that you need to have <coughs> on transformation leadership is the question of integrity. Everybody knows what integrity is all about. The other one is authenticity. Authenticity, you must be true to yourself. You must be true to your principle. You must be true to whatever you believe. Right? There is authenticity. I want to demonstrate authenticity with this one. You need the authenticity. It changes color all the time. Yeah? Bagi spek hijau, dia jadi hijau. Bagi spek ungu, dia jadi ungu. Kalau bagi putih, dia jadi putih. Kalau bagi kuning, dia jadi kuning. Yeah? These are the people who actually move around and change their principle all the time for their own benefit. This is what I call the chameleon leadership. Yeah? And you will never get very far with this kind of a leadership style. These people will be caught halfway when you talk about, you know, without authenticity in getting it. Okay? So, kalau saya pergi kepada Dato' Rahim, kalau Dato' Rahim kata biru, saya kata, okay, okay, biru. Pergi Dato' Zailan, Dato' Zailan kata kuning. Ah, kuning pun boleh juga. Yeah? Ah, pergi kat Raja Bhatt, dia kata, ah, merah. Okay, Mira, it's okay also. You know? So there is no position that I take. And therefore, I become you know, very easily taken up as far as, as far as that is concerned. Now, this kind of people, I think, are, is a very dangerous group of people. 
you need to be very mindful of who they are and what they are. And half of them politicians are like this. I have quite frank about it. Yeah? And therefore, we need to be very, 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 very clear of where we stand as far as principle is concerned. Yeah? And I have no two ways about this. So, when you want to talk about transformational leadership, therefore, this must be the two ingredients that you have. Right? And therefore, you want to also look at where where the change has been and whether the change has been balanced after Puntida. And this is the state of affairs today. Yeah? When we talk about sustainable development, this is a question that I want to raise. Yeah? Tak ada air uh, budak-budak exhausted. Yeah? Uh, depression, they are all not balanced. The balance is gone because of the leadership style is taken away from that kind, that kind of view. Yeah? And therefore we see the crisis ahead, at least within the context of the, the campus. Are the students balanced? Are the students got with the and they're supposed to get? Especially now when we talk about food, yeah? We had a, a big debate baru baru ni. Why suddenly the campus tidak ada makanan? It, 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 it baffles me, you know? Why suddenly we need to feed our students? And not only one campus, many campuses. Why there must be a food bank in the campus now? when we are supposed to be a developed country next year. Where, where have we gone wrong? Yeah? And what are the solutions to all these things? And if this is the crisis that we're going to see ahead, then as far as the future is concerned, there's very minimal that we can talk about. And this is a crisis, I think, that we are getting into as far as, as, far as leadership style is concerned. And last year, on a global scale, you see this. Yeah? Economically, it's imbalanced. Ecologically, it's imbalanced. Socially, it's imbalanced. And of course, geopolitically, it's imbalanced. The whole world is imbalanced. And what sort of leadership style do we need to adopt? Then, therefore, it becomes a question of what is the style that we want to look at to manage this so-called chaotic world. Yeah? There are many styles here. Yeah? But one, which one of these is actually appropriate for this sort of situation? And this is where I think the Muslim way of looking at things becomes an important way of how to solve some of this problem. So Burns says transformational leadership is a process where leaders and followers raise to one another to a higher level of morality and motivation. We've talked about that. Yeah? And he also said divorce of ethics leadership is reduced to management and politics are mere techniques. This, we see this all the time. Yeah? We see this all the time. Why? Because the ethical part of leadership is not well ingrained into the things that we want to do. Yeah? And therefore, when we look at this again, we begin to understand also there's another idea of what leadership is all about from Jim Collins and today's book, Good to Great. Yeah? They mengatakan level five leadership in it is a blend of personal humility and professional will channeling the ego away from yourself and into the goal of building the organization. In other words, egocentricity is minimized. We put it somewhere else so that the institution becomes better than just we are. Right? And when we look at this, suddenly we rem are reminded of this. Ikut resmi padi lagi berisi lagi tunduk when we talk about humility. Yeah? Now, this has been our sort of principle as leadership. But we do not use this until Jim Collins comes out with level 5 leadership. Oh, ini Melayu ada. Apa ni? Ikut resmi padi lagi berisi lagi tunduk. Orang Melayu ada ular menyusur akar tidak akan hilang bisanya. Yeah? This whole idea, perspective of humility, are coming back into this whole idea of leadership rather than mendebit dada and being arrogant that you know all the, all the solution that everybody else do not know the solution and such. Yeah? So we begin to understand then some of the issues that we want to address, particularly this ego. Yeah? When you talk about humility, there's always the counterbalance to it. And we go back to what Al-Ghazali said. Al Ghazali said quite clearly, declare your jihad on 12 enemies that you cannot see, and it starts with egoism. 
once you able to defeat this, then the rest will go. Arrogance will go, conceit will go, selfishness will go, greed lasts and everything else will go. To fight this is another issue by itself. How do you actually fight this? No Western leadership talks about this. Only the Islamic leadership talks about egocentricity being one of the counterbalance as far as leadership is concerned. They got to, if you can master and destroy them, then you are ready to fight the enemy that you can see. Half of the time we want to fight the enemy that we can see, but we do not fight the enemy that we cannot see. And therefore, your enemy, use the enemy that you cannot see to go against you. Ini tadi rasuah. Puji-puji. Hari ini Tan Sri nampak cantik Tan Sri. Okey, okey, naik pangkat, naik pangkat. These are the things that I think we need to be mindful of. Yeah. These are the things that we need to be very careful as far as what Al Ghazali tells. It's 12 things. Sekarang ni kita dah pandai pula. Gossiping dah panggil membawang pula. Yeah. To neutralize it so that we can still do whatever we want to do. So, this whole issue of fighting the internal enemy, I think, is where the Islamic leadership comes from. Not just the external leadership the way we understand it. Let's let let's develop this a little bit more. Yeah. So when we take we, when we look at the 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 apa ni, the uh, Al Ghazali principle, it goes beyond charisma, and therefore they get a balanced leadership. All traits of human constitute branches of wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice in a perfect equilibrium. Al Ghazali tells us that there are four things that we need to manage: courage, temperance. Justice and also uh, what we call wisdom. Yeah. Ini kalau saya baca buku-buku lain, I don't find this. At least the Western uh, sort of leadership model. Yeah. And what this Al Ghazali tells us, as far as he is concerned, he brings us into another sort of idea of this balance, this mizan. Yeah. Cemana kita nak balance empat benda ni? I've just, macam kita, kalau kita ambil this uh, atom ni, this is all the time shifting. Yeah? How do you balance this? And this is actually the leadership role as far as we are concerned. Tiap-tiap hari saya datang kerja, I want to balance this whole thing. Yeah? That is the crux of the leadership role as far as as far as far Al-Ghazali is concerned. How, how do you say that? Wisdom? Courage, temperance, justice is tengah tengah. Yeah, and they kata justice is not a particular virtue, but a balance of the sum of the several virtues. So there are many other virtues, but let's just talk about these three or four. Yeah, and this must be in a state of balance. Yeah, this must be in a state of balance. Wisdom, courage, and temperance. When that is in balance, then you get justice at the end of the day. And that is what leadership is all about as far as Islam is concerned. Islamic leadership is not about power. Islamic leadership is about justice. Which is very different from the concept of Western leadership. Let's see what leadership is about power. Yeah? You go into all over, nak, nak apa? Nak dapat pangkat ni. But for Islam, it is about justice. You have power, you must dispense justice at the same time. And that is a big difference as far as this concerned. Yeah? So how do you do this? And I think Ghazali is very clear on this. Yeah? Some of these things are taken from the Quran. Justice, balance, wise, uh, self-audit, courage. These are the four things that he talks about. Yeah? We talk about, I will call this the spiritual force. That's the one that moves us. All right? And this is a kind of instinct that I think we need to talk. So when we talk about virtue in university, in Yeah, the spiritual force that makes us what we are in the context of this balance that Azali is talking about. And this is well illustrated yeah, from the Prophet's way of life. You look at this. The Prophet's way of life, he lived modestly, modestly talked softly, walked humbly, Dress simply, speak honestly, 
live justly, practice faithfully, think truthfully, learn obediently, teach patiently, advise wisely, work diligently, transact ethically, and the transaction of the do, plan systematically, behave respectfully, act moderately, interact politely, but fight courageously. Ha, kita tentang ini yang kita kurang. Fight tu tak, tak pernah courageous. Mengangguk je. Yeah. So, although he is soft, yeah, yeah, when it comes to fighting, he's very courageous. That is the limits of what leadership is all about. Yeah. It becomes a behavior. It becomes a kind of a habit that you will try and follow the way you want to do it. As far as as far as that is concerned, so we go back into a substance that the Western leadership model does not talk about is a kalbu. Yeah. So dalam kalbu itu, which is a spiritual seat for the intellect, we have got wisdom. We have got temperance. We have got courage. Yeah. And when these three things intersect then you get the justice. And that is what Al-Ghazali is trying to say as far as, as far as leadership quality is concerned. So we become God conscious. We become God conscious in the sense that it is rooted in the innate experiential knowledge cultivated to the intuition and spiritual reflection in the heart. Okay? And the heart, I think, becomes a substance that we need to talk about that we have not talked enough in the context of whatever we do in dalam, dalam, dalam leadership in particular. When we talk about leadership in the Western centricity, we talk about ini takdir. Yeah? Most of the leadership model will talk about leadership traits and leadership behavior. Mana datangnya Allah Alam. Dalam ni kosong. It's void. Yeah? So they look at externalities and begin to Equate this to that, this to that, and say, oh, this is a theory for that, and this is a theory for that. Yeah? It works sometimes, but oftentimes it also does not work. Right? Because this void is always not a void. Ada je wants to do. Right? Although they say it's a void, it's not a void. Yeah? And that void is filled by other means, and this is what Al-Ghali talks about, the 12 unseen enemies. Yeah? Siang pun ada, malam pun ada, dia tak kira. Yeah? It's always there. It's always there in the particular sense. And that's why I think to understand this is something that I think we need to go back a little bit more and find out what the heart is all about. Yeah? Everybody has seen a heart, I'm sure. right? And everybody knows what the heart looks like. Right? And everybody also knows how the heart functions. Yeah? Blood in, blood out, oxygen in, oxygen out, and so on and so forth. When the heart is in, is in function, uh, perfect function, you are okay. Yeah? But if it's not, then you need to look sorry. It is also using some of these blood cells and so on and so forth to make it work. Trying to show you that this whole system is a balanced system. Yeah? The moment the heart goes into imbalance, then you have problems. Heart attack, like to like and then you go to a doctor. Doctor can tell your heart is not balanced today, but you must go and uh, exercise. Uh, otherwise, you'll die tomorrow. Uh, then that one will tell you lah. Every day you will go. You tell, Every day now you have to do this. Uh, every morning, I do this half an hour. You will never forget to do this. Yeah? Because you want to remain in that particular conscious state. Alright? Now, let's look at the other side of it. The same thing. Super, you got my physical heart. We have got the four components of wisdom, of courage. Yeah. 
just like the heart is bathed by all these other cells, here we have values that makes it work. And in virtues, and kita the garden of knowledge and virtues. Yeah? To make the heart work in a perfect order, this must be the elements that nourish it. All right? Just like these people here, they go for exercise, to nourish it, we have to do that. Yang Islamnya solat, yang bukan Islamnya mungkin meditation or whatever it is. And this is already a well-defined theory. If you want to get the heart maintained, you have to do this activities. Yeah? Tapi tak ramai yang nak buat macam ni. Kalau dia katakan, if you don't this tomorrow, you'll kick the bucket, then that probably everybody will do. Just like these people here. Yeah? So my point is basically we need to balance this too. It's all about this balance. The physical balance and the spiritual balance. As much as you exercise and go and do uh, jogging and whatever it is, yeah, as much as you take good food, you also need to nourish yourself in this particular, in this particular context. All right? So Al Ghazali mentioned this very quickly, <clears throat> very clearly. All human beings constitute this branch of wisdom, courage, and temperance. And justice in a perfect equilibrium. And all these four has been attained by no one but the emissary of God. For other people, like us, there is this divergence that we need to work on. Yeah? And therefore, kerja kita is basically to get this balance up. And how do you do this? I think Ghazali is also very clear about this. Now, when he talks about justice, courage and temperance, this is the meaning. Wisdom, kata dia, is a quality of knowing as well as reflecting deeply before aptly translating into action in accordance to the primal instinct that distinguishes between false and truth in making conscious decision. It reflects the experiential state of God consciousness to arrive at a perfect balance. Mananya, hikmah ini adalah menentukan sama ada yang betul ataupun yang tidak. Yeah? To have that luxury or that flexibility of know what is truth and what is false. Right? That is what wisdom is all about. And sometimes people who are very wise knows what choice they need to make. Because that is a kind of you know, uh, knowledge that he or she has been given. Bagi dia, a courage is a harmonious state of perfect balance by managing and disciplining emotions especially rage and anger. Yeah? And this is, I think, again proven dalam leadership. If you are in a state of rage and anger, you don't make decision as a leader because your decision will be the lousy decision. Yeah? Display of ego, desires, domination, so that wisdom and justice can be served as prescribed. So it's about self-control. How do you manage yourself if you want to be a good leader? Right? And to manage yourself, maknanya, is about these things. Yeah? Menunjuk, nunjuk, to show off, this is not part and parcel of that leadership style that uh, uh, Ghazali is uh, advocating. We talk about temperance. Temperance, kata dia, refers to the natural inclination to do what is right. Bukan saja what is right. Tetapi in the right measure, the right way, the right time, the right reason, the right situation. Sometimes the, the time is right, the measure is wrong. Sometimes the reason is right, the situation is wrong. Sometimes the timing is right, the way is wrong. It has to be everything in one. Yeah? Right measure, right way, right time, right reason, and right situation. And I think this is quite clear yeah, in the particular context. It's indicative of the level of discipline placed on the appetitive faculty by the intellect as prescribed in the law or the sharia. Right? So the tendency to do right, memang ada. Tapi how it is executed is the issue that Al-Ghazali tells us. Right? And then you talk about justice. Justice denotes playing, uh, playing in their rightful places. Outwardly, it concerns with the relationship between one to another in ensuring just and fair treatment 
intrinsically it relates between oneself and God. Right? So it is not just about us and other people, it's about us with ourselves. We will, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that a little bit more. It is about <clears throat> giving what is due to whom it is due and the way it is due. It is foremost about managing oneself before applying it to fellow human beings, society, to God, and about actualizing the state of balance. This, like Sekali, I find is very unique. It's about managing oneself first before you want to manage other people. Ini kadang-kadang dia jadi uh, apa ni uh, ketua hari ni jadi ketua dah nak manage orang lain. Yeah, here it talks about can you manage yourself first. So in other words, we are talking about anak kita terus, rumah kita terus, isteri kita terus, suami kita terus, keluarga kita terus, baru kita mau urus orang lain. That's managing yourself. And if you cannot manage that, then highly chances that you will not be able to manage orang lain. And this is, I think, the crux of this whole idea of what leadership is all about. You manage yourself first before you apply this to fellow human beings, society and to God. And I think this is a question that I think we need to think about this in this university. Do we have enough? Macam semalam, where was semalam? No, this is semalam was in Mara. We're talking about the problem in Mara. Yeah? The discipline in Mara. The whole idea is nobody is managing themselves. Yeah? Nobody knows how to manage themselves. And therefore, it creates all sorts of problems in Mara alone. And I think this is something that we need to be mindful about as far as organization is concerned. Now, that is then will be the receptacle for, 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 uh, for God consciousness. God consciousness is rooted in the innate experiential knowledge, cultivated to intuition and spiritual reflection. The state of consciousness acknowledges God's presence in the practice of remembrance yeah, in the heart that will transcend the closeness and the recognition of the Almighty. So, the kind of remembrance, the kind of zikir that we've got in this particular, in this particular context. A heart that is sound, tranquil and peace is a remembrance of God recognized of the submissive heart. It is free from any cardinal desires that hinders one from realizing the state of God consciousness. Right? And last but not least, the heart-guided leadership inspires a person who is conscious about God in a submissive way to demonstrate a wholesome and a harmonious state of balance in delivering justice. Question of justice at the end, at the end of the day. All right? Now, if this is what he said, then I just want also to <coughs> bring to the idea that benda-benda yang Islamic ni kadang-kadang comes from non-Islamic sources. Uh, this is another issue that sometimes we have. Kadang-kadang Islam tu, they must be 100% pure Islam. In this case, it's not. Yeah? Kalau kita katalah, this is what Al-Ghazali said, it comes from Aristotle. Aristotle has got the idea of a perfect virtue of justice, courage, temperance, tapi dia ada banyak lagi. Magnificent, magnanimity, liberality, gentleness, and so on, wisdom. Right? Now, Aristotle, Cicero took it, another philosopher in the, in the Roman time, dia ambil empat dia. Wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. Right? And Al-Ghazali took that, tapi Al-Ghazali add the whole idea of balance. So the development ideas kadang-kadang can come from different sources. It doesn't have to be just Islamic sources, but orang-orang macam ni add on to it. Yeah? Add on to it to make it even to make it even better. And how does it mean like that? So once in a while, kalau kita lihat lah, if I just want to draw this diagram, once in a while when we come to work, we try to balance this as much as possible. It may not be all the time possible, but as much as possible we try to balance this. Wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice a little and Al-Ghazali is quite clear about this, of how you do it. They say, if you are in a state of wisdom that is balanced, you will see this discretion, excellence, understanding of the subtle implication of the action and the, and the defect of the soul. Discretion means making good decision. Yeah? Excellence means not the excellence of ABC, 
excellence in a more holistic way of the conducive environment and so on and so forth. Many of the decisions that we make sometimes have subtle implications. Kita kata nak buang seorang kerja, seorang daripada kerja, but we have to think about anaknya, isterinya macam mana. Yeah? That's a subtle implication that we must also think about. Of course, kita boleh buang uh, suaminya kerja tak bagus, but what happened to the other family? Macam rasuah. Pakai baju oren, dia belum dia belum charge lagi ni. Dia pakai baju oren. Tapi anak dia, isteri dia dah paralyzed. Yeah? That's a subtle implication that we need to look at. People who have got wisdom will understand where the subtle implication is all about. And that's what I think wisdom in this particular context. And of course, the hidden defects of the soul. Sometimes the decisions that we make are not perfect. And that's the, the, this is where the muhasabah and so on and so forth come in. Kata dia, kalau temperance in the balance, you see this. Generosity, modesty, patience and tolerance. Right? The generosity, modesty, patience and tolerance. This is where you are in a state of balance as far as the temperance is concerned. Courage is a quality that gives rise to nobility, endurance, dignity and suppression of anger. Suppression of rage. Yeah? Kalau saya masuk-masuk je pejabat hari ni maki semua orang. I know I'm not in a state of balance. We can tell. Ini seolah-olah KPI kita. Yeah? We can tell you are not in a state of balance if you don't meet some of the standards. So, the, I like this because dia sekurang-kurangnya memberi kita isyarat where you are at that particular point in time. Tak payah orang nak beritahu kita. Ini nak katakan self-control tadi. Yeah? If today I'm not generous, <coughs> if today I'm not tolerant, then I'm not perhaps balanced in this temperance. And how do I make it balanced? Then I got to go back to how do I become modest, temp apa ni, tolerant and patient. Yeah? Kalau mini juga, yeah, hari ni if I'm undignified, if I do something wrong, then I'm not, I'm not balanced there. I, I, know, I know what I'm all about. You will probably not know. Therefore, I become the person that monitors myself. Rather than sekarang ni konsepnya orang lain kena monitor kita. It will not happen. It will not happen. You need to monitor yourself. And this is what Al-Ghazali is telling us. Yeah? <coughs> Dia sama juga. <coughs> Kalau if you are in state of imbalance katanya, as far as wisdom is concerned, you come to office hari ni, very cunning, swindling, deception and slyness. If you come to the office today with this, then you know you have something wrong with that. Yeah? Begitu juga. If excess leads to greed, cupidity, ostentatious, immorality, then you are not balanced there. Here, if you've got recklessness, pride, arrogant, conceited, quick to anger, then you are not balanced there. So this is almost an indicator for us to know where we are in the state of leadership and balance as far as Al-Ghali is concerned. I find this is a very practical way of looking of who we are and what we are at the moment in time. If you understand this, you can already practice the kind of leadership that we talked about. Yeah? So the equilibrium of these three principles will then give you the good traits of leadership. It proceeds into the service of justice. So kesudahannya, all the decisions that we make in our jawatan kuasa, does it serve justice atau tidak? Itu je. Yeah? If it serves justice, then I think we are there in the context of what Azgar Ali is trying to mention. Let me go a little bit more. Yeah. So what do we need to do? We are all here with low consciousness. We want to go into high consciousness in terms of kita punya apa ni, spirituality is concerned. So that means we need to go just from bodily, from external to mentally to our own soul, spirituality. And we moved up from low consciousness to high consciousness. Right? We also want to move out from something which is extrinsic outside to something which is intrinsic, which is inside. 
That's where the cult is. It's about. Yeah. Al Ghazali punya WCJT ni, yeah, is about trying to fit this into this quadrant. High consciousness, very sensitive in the intrinsic cult punya sensitivity. How do we do this? I this is a struggle. Yeah. Kalau di sini doesn't work. Kalau di sini doesn't work. How do you move that? And this is where the word adab comes in. Yeah. Adab will bring us to peradaban, civilization. Peradaban will tell us Ibn Khaldun tell us peradaban will go up and down, depending on the leadership style. Yeah. If your leadership style is good, then it will stay up. If your leadership style is bad, then it will go down. Somebody else will come. And it goes up and down, up and down, yeah. and this then will depend on that principle that we talked about of Al Ghazali, when you balance, yeah. And that is where adab is. Adab is defined in this particular concept: the purposeful act in which justice is actualized. Something that we do because we want justice to be the end point, right? And that is where adab is when these three are all in a balance, in a balanced state. We'll try to draw this into a kind of a Masalehnya style, lah kan? Kalau kita kata kita kata dia tak ni, dia kata not good enough. So we'll try to draw the balance. Yeah, consciousness, high consciousness, low low spirituality, high spirituality, low consciousness. Yeah. And we can say, we need to nurture leadership. We need to nurture leadership from the start of mula-mula just the physical. Orang boleh pangkat yang dipentingkannya kursi empuknya, uh, office cantik, yeah, ada ada driver. Uh, this is important for them, yeah. And that's a, the basic of it. The luar, the externalities. People always associate that with leadership. Yeah. It's about position, and it's about charisma to a certain extent, right? Now, as you develop this, as you nurture it further, as what Azrazi tells us, you go into the mind state, and the mind state will talks about success, influence, and persona. Persona means mananya your uh, personality depicts what you are, right? Based on the success and based on the kind of influence. That you have, but finally we want to arrive at this: a well-balanced leadership, and this is where the spirituality comes in. Yeah? And this is a presence of all the things, physical, mental, and spirituality, and that spirituality will then give you this what we call the leadership of habits. Tidak kira lah whether you are in office, you are at the house, you are in the marketplace, you are wherever, you are still a leader. You don't hold a position anymore. You don't need titles anymore. You don't need uh, things that you know uh, is associated with leaders anymore. By virtue, you are a leader in whatever you do. Is what I call it 360 degrees. Kemana kita pergi je, people will respect you as a leader. And that's the kind of leadership that I think Al Ghali is trying to advocate in this particular in this particular sense, right? So it is a relational dynamics in a system, more important than the individual. So how do you actually move in a system? And this is why kita nak katakan, forget about the silos. The silos will not make you a leader. How you mix with one another and how you dyna dynamically move is something that makes you a leader. That will be your 360 leadership as such. Yeah? We can also equate this to the stations that we need to know. Yeah? From Amara right down, sorry. From Amara right down to Camilla. Right? We need to move from that level. So, ini ada satu benda yang lagi sekali kita boleh faham sendiri. Where you are, nobody will be able to tell you where you are now, but you'll be able to tell you where you are in this particular context. Yeah? So ini yang menjadi penting dalam the leadership style 
as far as the Muslim is concerned. It is not just, you know, uh, uh, position and such, right? And the presence of the three, of the physical, the mental, and the spirituality in one. And that is what I think the leadership of the Islamic value is concerned. I want to go into one something which I am very passionate about, this word, modal insan. Yeah? Looking at this diagram, if we talk of modal insan, it is only here. It is a one-dimensional concept. It is very external. Dalam tak ada langsung. And it's also very dehumanizing in the sense that you do not live like a human being. The definition of modal insan is the economic interest of the individual. So if you ask me to give a talk, I will ask immediately, Dato' Rahim, berapa nak bayar? Dato' Rahim kata, Ansi ini government rate 300 sejam. Ah, takkan kot. Saya rektor. Okey lah, okey lah. 500 setiap Eh, saya pun Tan Sri juga. Yeah. So, I keep on negotiating this transactional thing. Uh, bila saya start, tak satisfied, tak apalah. Hari, hari tu, saya agaknya saya busy lagi tu. And go and find somebody else. That's the whole idea of human capital. That's why I'm so worried that we use this human capital ni seolah-olah dia satu istilah yang ada ciri-ciri kemanusiaan padanya. It doesn't have. The human capital theory does not have. Whereas dalam Islam, we want to create this, the perfect human being. And that is vastly different from this one. Okay? So we want to create this manusia yang ada balance, yang ada mizan, yeah? yang boleh ada rasa kemanusiaan kepada orang lain. And that is, I think, the issue that we want to talk about when we talk about leadership. Most of my, uh, apa ni, uh, Unhappiness about today's leadership model is basically is just based on this one, not that particular dimension at all. I think this is the hadith that tells you, surely the body is a piece of flesh. If it's good, the whole body is good. If it's corrupted, the whole body is corrupted. It is surely it is surely the heart. Yeah? And that is what I think we are going to talk about today. Now, I'll just give an illustration. Sometimes they talk this very abstract. Eh? I'll give you an illustration. This, kita punya blood vessels, yeah, the blood is supposed to flow in, and it will flow into the heart. Yeah? And then you get all the blood being circulated in your body. All right? Now, kalau kita, uh, the whole body, kalau you buang all the kulit, all the daging, these are, these are your blood vessels. Yeah? Every part of your body, there is his blood vessels. Yeah? Now, okay, it will flow into all the blood vessels. Now, katakanlah. The corrupted heart. Dia dah mula ada ni. The plug, whatever it is. Yeah. And you begin to get less blood flow coming in. Yeah. And kita buatlah lagi perang yang tak senonoh ni. Banyak dia. Right? And the heart also begin to suffer at the same time, right? And finally, you find that the blood that flows out here is very minimal because of the plug that you create within yourself. And finally, the whole heart becomes almost a dead heart. Hati yang mati, hati yang tidak lagi boleh merasa apa-apa. When that happens, then I think you'll get a different kind of person. Just to show you this, yeah. Perangai kita ini, oh sorry. 
perangai kita ni is a reflection of our heart right and finally this is what will happen and this is where bila kita cakap tentang nafs amarah ni kata manifesting and inciting ego the question of ego tadi ya yeah? due to wcjt disequilibrium and you get a different sort of people around you and we begin to understand where these people come from and not membetulkan ya you have to betul the heart you cannot betul the only the mind but this one is not taken into account all right they have hearts within they understand not that's a quranic verse right and it's very very clear what it means as far as that's concerned So in the context of Al-Ghazali misalnya kalau ini tidak ada then you get that absent yeah that's what it means kesudahannya hidup kita ni only on this this becomes our KPI as it were rather than this one all right because of the heart wasn't sustained wasn't developed wasn't nurtured and i think this is the issue that i hope we can think about when we talk about the question of and then it becomes a disequilibrium let me just finish with a little bit more so dalam keadaan kita sekarang ni if this is me or you kita katakan bahawa we need to balance this how do we work this balance is something that we need to go back to the heart yeah kalbu kita tu now the irony is this kalau kita lahir, kita lahir, sorry, kita lahir, our blood pressure, you know, our, our pulse ni, jantung kita dah mula berdenyut awal lagi. Otak tu masih tak ada lagi. The, 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 the brain cell wasn't even there. Yeah? But kalau kita masuk universiti, kerja kita membesarkan otak ni. Yang ini tak ada langsung. Malah makin lama makin teruk dia. Ya. And that's the imbalance I think that we need to look at. How do you actually develop this and that at the same time? And I think this university has got tremendous potential to do this kat USM susah nak cakap ni tapi dekat sini I think it's something that we need to develop how do you develop the kalbu and the, the binda together these two two seats of two seats of intellect yeah? so that we can also move in this station as we move into apa ni the consciousness at the same time I'm the human capital yeah and human capital ni tak ada ni Uh, let me forget about this one this one will be too too open uh, too technical so what we want to do in the, at the end of the day dalam dalam konteks kita ni how do you start have this balance yeah with the kalbu and this word sejahtera that we use in the context of makasid ni how do you balance these two together that is i think the crucial question when we talk about leadership in the context of islam and dalam western context if i'm not mistaken ini tak ada langsung yeah this balance tidak ada langsung it doesn't it doesn't even mentioned about it dalam dalam konteks the western the western values so i would like to end up by by seeing how do you balance this yeah by balancing is be specifically putting that in connecting it to the uh mental faculty and you have this cwjt in and we talk about this balance leadership uh, with the heart in this particular context okay? and last but not least to quote al ghazali again the energy stored in the seed draws from other energy sources in the soil the sun the air the water from the rain and it begins to form a plant similarly that of the heart in exercising leadership. So maknanya kalau kita ambil ini sebagai contoh the WCJT itu memang dah ada. Yeah? The moment you nurture it then you get into a lovely plant as it were. Right? 
So benda tu memang dah ada Dia sebab dia call stock Dia bukan stock energy ni Seolah-olah nilai tu sudah ada Hanya untuk kita pupuk Macam mana kita nak pupuk Macam mana kita nak develop Is a question I think That we need to talk about We need to talk about leadership In this particular See? I think I will stop there So thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Ada apa persoalan? Ya. Silakan. Ha. Yes. Ada we open the session for any question and answer uh, for yang bagi Tan Sri. Silakan. Ada ada soalan daripada audience ah oh, okay tuan Syed Tahir silakan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah taala wabarakatuh yang berbahagia Tan Sri. Uh, uh, I saw just now in Tan Sri's presentation there is a word uh, intuition, the ability to make decisions through intuition Tan Sri. Uh, it, it can come, in my opinion, from a balanced, uh, well-balanced uh, personality that Tasnim mentioned just now. Can Tansi further elaborate on this, uh, making decisions through intuition? I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure how to ex explain this, but basically it's a level of confidence that you have. Kadang-kadang, uh, Intuition ini is a kind of inspiration that tells you where to where to go and what to do. Yeah, uh, it happens in in often bagi saya lah in a in a, in, a, in a meditative state. Kalau kita duduk dan kita bertafakur sekejap, that intuition do come. You know, and that intuition do open a, a way of looking at things. And so, bagi saya, this is another way of extracting information from I don't know where. Yeah? But it has to have a very clear mind dalam konteks ni. Uh, kepala kita tu must be very clear. Dia, tak, dia tidak uh, confused with many other things. So, half of the time bila saya nak buat, bila saya ada problem, I just clear my mind. And then the intuition will come. But if you grapple with the issue, then you get very very colluded in terms of making decision so you must there must be a way that you you stand back from what your problem is and then that particular intuition will come in you know it's, 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 but you need to have a level of confidence that in this intuition is something that is rewarding for you kalau you rasa ini satu berbelah bagi berbelah bagi then it will not work it will not work in this particular sense. Yeah. So the this the other the other I mean you in, 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 in the in the Western context they got a gut gut feeling. Kan? You never know what this gut feeling is all about. Yeah. And intuition will be come to you, but I think it's more refined than just gut feeling. Uh, not just a visceral thing, but it is more refined in that particular context. Yeah. Any other Sila. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, thank you, Tansri, uh, for a very good talk. Uh, you were saying how we can contribute, in this, especially this university, towards this leadership with cult, uh, with heart. And um, I, I was an, uh, an alum, alumni from this university, a bachelor in business administration, and I learned management, strategic management, even Islamic I mean management from an Islamic perspective. But what I learned today from your talk, I think <laughs> it's like one whole semester's worth of management course. <laughs> okay, so I think I think that's, uh, that's the best way to educate our students in terms of management leadership from Islamic perspective. So I, I hope maybe the Kuliah of Economics can somehow 
uh, one call that uh, put uh, this whatever that you have uh, talked in in the syllabus or something. Yeah. I think that's just my my suggestion. Thank you. I think the problem with us is kita takut nak nak advancekan kita punya pendapat. Our benchmark is always still the Western punya benchmark. If it doesn't meet the Western benchmark, kita tak berani menyuarakan. I think we need to break out from that from that thinking. Yeah. We need to advance our own thinking. Uh, if you look at this, uh, MIT dah mula guna hard lah. Uh, the point is that bila MIT guna hard besok, then everybody will guna hard because MIT say so, not IIUM. So we lose an opportunity. Uh, I I really I mean, appreciate that. Maybe we can we can work this a little bit more, and 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 and, and try and advance this. Because matanya the IUM we have we have what the CARP guided leadership model, and that is something that I think we can be very proud of if it works in that particular sense. Yeah? I'm sure there's a lot more scholars here who studied Al Ghazali in, in depth that can bring this into a very high level of uh, thinking and philosophy in in trying to define this. Inshallah. Thank you. Ada lagi? Yes. Uh, is, uh, just a quick question. Just, uh, I would like to know, because you were talking about wisdom, uh, courage and uh, temperaments, uh, in our education and our life upbringing, there are totally different from one to another. How you balance it and make it universal. In terms of, if we have Siri, we have a certain standard. Um, perspective, will be differs from one person to another person. Uh, uh, how do you make it as uh, acceptable in all in terms of justice uh, when it comes to standards? I think we just need to take the Islamic perspective. Bagi saya lah, basically at the end of the day, the Islamic perspective overrides everything else. I mean, macam hari tu, Sirim, what is Sirim yang datang nak, nak buat uh, evaluation? And, and, and they, they kata kat kita, uh, um, we are learning from IIUM how to do the Shariah compliance thing. You know? Dan kemudian dia belajar pada kita, dia nanti akan gunakan untuk orang lain dan kita akan belajar daripada dia pula. Uh, I, I think this is not acceptable lah. Maknanya kalau kita punya, then I think we should be advancing. Why do we give it to Sirim and then Sirim push it to, to somebody else? So I think this university, that's why when I talk about principles, that it, what is the principles that we need to, to put firmly in this university yang kita compromise? Yeah? Tak kira lah whether, it's, whether I, I am quite sure any other thing that comes across, dia sama ada inferior ataupun lebih kurang sama. The only problem now, bila kita cakap tentang kalbu ini, kita tidak ada seolah-olah measure. Uh, it is another penyakit. Eh? Everything must be measured. That's why we are trying to move away from this whole idea of measure. The measure is me. As I have mentioned, kalau saya datang hari ini dengan perangai yang tak senonoh, you know that I am not in a balanced state. I know I am not in a balanced state. You know, That's the KPI. Our KPI is very, very open dalam konteks ini. Yeah? datang marah-marah, datang uh, you know, do whatever that is not supposed to be done, then you know that this person is not in a balanced state. It's very clear to us what it is, what it is all about. And that's why I said suka ni, because after this talk, you can already practice it. You don't have to go for another talk, buy a lagi 250 ringgit and listen to another one. You know? You already can practice this. Because you know what are that is required of you. One is manage yourself first. Itu pertamanya. And manage yourself first. Itu apa dia? That balance. Wisdom, courage, temperance. Once that is balanced, then you get justice. Quite clearly. But it takes time because sometimes kita tidak, kita tidak sedar. Yeah? Kita tidak sedar what we do because this is a habitual thing yang kita buat every day. We don't stop and think. But after a while, you begin to understand, uh, I'm not doing this the right way today, and therefore, you, 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 you step back. You, 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 you quote-unquote, uh, repair yourself in a way. Yeah? Uh, and this, I think, is something that can be done, 
And I think we should try and do this in, in this university in the context that we decide what is it is important for us. Don't let other people decide what is important for us. Once people decide what is important for us, then the principle that we are trying to advocate in university sometimes they're uh, you know, being put aside or being marginalized or whatever it is. And I think there's a lot of challenge as far as this is concerned, as far as uh, IIUM is concerned. Any other questions, sir? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Tan Sri, um, my name is Ilmizad. I'm a representative of PMA, Professional Management Association. So we would like to thanks for, uh, to you because you are willing to, to share with us your opinions about the leaderships. So this is the first time that we have this session together with Ms. Yeah. So I got two questions. Eh? The first one, uh, leaders, they come and go. Yeah? And normally leaders will bring their own agendas or interests in terms of improving the organizations. How do you manage the, the change and uh, to get the buy-in of the members of the organizations? The second one is, uh, what is your expectation to us, the administrator, in, uh, in uh, managing the process or administrations with your new agenda? <laughs> Let me answer the second one first. Second one is, uh, I have a tremendous hope. Saya dah sini what nine months now. Yeah, uh, I I see the construct of this university is well done. Tinggalkan, we need to do fine tuning here and there. Right? I think all of you are capable of delivering what needs to be delivered. All of you are capable of you know. Uh, making that innovation that is supposed to be done. And I, I have no problems with that. So I rasa very confident that when we move beso, uh, forward, I think we will achieve what that needs to be achieved. There's no, ini bukan, bukan to make you happy, eh? uh, but I, I feel that way. Otherwise, I will not, uh, I will not, what do we say? Uh, I will not be enjoying myself yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second, the first one, I think, is, is, is a more difficult question. I think people who come to this university should understand this university first, rather than they plong their agenda over the university. The, what is this university is all about? I think to understand this university and then to try and shape it the way it should be done is the bigger challenge. Uh, the difficulty, I think, when I look at people around, Macam saya kata tadi lah, the moment it becomes a rector, you want to change it the way you want to see it without understanding the context of the university. And therefore, most people will not feel comfortable in that, in that, in that sort of circumstances. Yeah? So I hope what we are trying to do today, and that's why the consultation that I did with you, it takes quite a while, but I think that consultation uh, means that you are allowed to say what you want to say means that you want to you know, uh, communicate with us. So that at the end of the day, bila kita buat sesuatu, is something that all of your opinions are taken into account. It is not just about a one-man show. It is not just about a three or four men one-man show. It is about everybody coming together. And that's why bila kita ada flagship ini, bila saya buat flagship ini, saya kata, if I can get 10 flagships, I'm happy. But now we've got 22 flagships. You know? Where does the other, the other 12 come from? It comes from you. It doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from any one of us. It comes from you. And because it comes from you, then I think you're committed to this. Yeah? Because it comes from you, then you own it. Because it comes from you, then I think you have some commitment to whatever you want to do. So I think this is the way we need to work move, moving forward. They did the other, lah. basically, uh, you know, I'm from this, you're from that. I think that that silo business, I think we need to forget about it. It takes quite a while to, 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 to get away from the silo business because we are so used to that thinking. But over time, I think we should work as one platform, as one university, and with one ideals and how to, you know, to, move, the, to, to move the principle forward. Yeah? Um, rest assured, inshallah, I think we will arrive at where we want to arrive uh, very soon. Yeah? So thank you so much for that. Uh, any other question? 
Okay, Tan Sri, talking about SDGs and flagship ni kan, to get today only we have like uh, concurrent events. Uh, satu di Mill Sports Complex, we have the um, IIUM flagship program, uh, apa tu? Uh, para Voli. Para Voli Sports Clinic and Demonstration at Mill Sports Complex. And then another one, we have SDG workshop with student leaders at Wadi Budi, handled by Dr. Zainal, insyaAllah. So, yeah. Tan Sri, hari ni? Oh. Uh, the same time, 9.30 pagi tadi, semua oh. start uh, this morning. Uh. Okay, uh, saya ada dua, Tan Sri. Satunya ialah, um, when you were talking about morality tadi kan, uh, sometimes um, I think um, yang um, kita selalu jumpa orang yang uh, they use morality um, uh, yang uh, morality untuk kita condone to their uh, um, to something yang not good. Uh, sometimes lah macam kita macam uh, they have been doing uh, sometimes they use morality tu untuk kita bagi macam to to decide on whether tu kena decide on based on morale tapi sebenarnya is something that they condone to something yang uh, not good. Okay, secondly, uh, mungkin macam mana kita, how should we go about that? Dan keduanya, Tan Sri, for your information, for this year and maybe next year, kita ada ramai administrator kita ni yang akan berpencin. So, these people are all those yang, orang-orang yang start dengan universiti tau, with the establishment of the universiti daripada mula-mula dulu. So, living, they are living us. So, macam mana, mungkin um, ada cara, how would you suggest that this um, otai-otai yang akan tinggalkan kami, the administrator yang yang muda-muda ni untuk they actually um, share dan uh, tinggalkan some 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 values lah untuk kami yang tinggal ni insya Allah. Who are these? Oh ramai. Datuk Wan, Datuk Zailan. Uh, ramai. Encik <laughs> uh, Hamdan, ramai kat sini. Uh, Datuk Rahim. <laughs> ramai Tan Sri. I, I, was, I was taken by Datuk Rahim punya suggestion that the, apa ni, after this board of directors will give talks on leadership you know uh, apa dia, mungkin the Japanese ambassador the Turkish ambassador the Saudi ambassador I don't know what they will talk about but uh, you know and of course it includes this orang-orang yang you call the wise man right? so I think they should I think sharing of information is something that I think we should we should galakkan because I think your legacy of running the university is something that people must understand Kalau tidak, uh, this will be uh, taken for granted and this is what I think will be set. They set a new stage for the university, they redefine things for the university and I think uh, the university will not be what the university is in this particular context. Yeah. In the context of morality, ni, I say tak berani nak bercakap sangat because uh, you need to demonstrate that you are quote unquote morally sensitive before you can before you can even talk about it i am not too i'm not too comfortable about it yeah tapi you don't use morality to control people you use people use morality to control themselves so maknanya once i understand what morality is all about then it becomes me controlling myself i don't need another 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 you know you, you know what i mean eh? to tell you what is right and what is wrong. Itu kesedaran itu, I think, is what is important. How do you build this in that person so that that person becomes, quote-unquote, his own monitoring system to, to, to tell him what is right? Much like this question of intuition today. Yeah? Uh, you know, sometimes when, sometimes when, 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 when you do something, uh, for example, eh, if, I, if, I were to, if I were to take this home, uh, you probably will not know agaknya. I'll just bring it out. Yeah? Uh, jalan lah. Nobody knows. But there are something that within your heart, lepas tu, you say, but the thing, the di hati kita, there's something is not right. I think that's the sensitivity that you want to have. Your heart is your moral compass. What you do is right, ataupun tidak, di situ letaknya. You know? Uh, and I think how do you nurture that, how do you make that sensitive is something that I think we need to think about and that is part of education saya rasa lah that's part of education but so I, I, I am not into people telling other people what to do uh, I think that is not that shows to me that uh, we Muslims have lost control over ourselves and this is what's happening now uh, you know when all sorts of when all sorts of uh, apa tu uh, what do I say? Eh? 
maybe not fatwa, rulings of some nature and say this, this can be done, this cannot be done and stuff like that. I think we need to go back to our own selves and see what is it that we can tell for ourselves to be moral in that particular sense. Yeah? Okay, I, I don't know whether there's any more questions. Yes, so. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Tansri. I feel uh, so happy today uh, after listening to your talk. Uh, Tansri, uh, we are here administrators. You know, uh, I've been working for almost 30 years in this university. I really love this university. And I tried for six years to get uh, employment in this university without, you know, uh, uh, I didn't give up. I didn't give up. Uh, but in 1990, in 1990, I got this post as administrator in this university. For information, times three, we are here. I think nobody denies. Uh, as, as administrator, there is a feeling uh, which we feel we are the second class citizen. That's a feeling. You can't deny it. You know, the words uh, from a rector last time, uh, never mind they're just administrator. The word just administrator, it really, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> we feel so bad. Everybody knows here. But with your leadership, I think now we have strength. When you said about the 12 enemies, uh, which we have to fight. I think the academics must fight one enemy that is egoism, which uh, with that, I think we will feel at home instead of being the, just the servant to academics because actually we feel we are together instead of the servant to the academics. Please stop, you know, you are just administrator, administrator. you have to do this to that for us. Mm. I think that's very bad. Uh, to me, I, I don't feel that bad because, okay, I don't, I'm not an academic, I don't have PhD, but I can produce children with PhDs. And some of my children are uh, this, yeah, uh, with yeah. PhD now. But please, um, you know, create an, a system which administrator and academics are together without yeah. anybody is superior to, uh, from one another. Thank you, Tansri. Thank you. I, I, I think I, I think we have addressed this uh, in, in some of the discussion we had with uh, Dr. Rahim. Um, the, di the, di the difficulty, much in the USM, I, I, I told them there is no two groups, academic and administrators, they, they are the same. The only difference is kita memberi kelebihan-kelebihan uh, kepada academic yang seolah-olah mendorong kepada kefahaman, they are one above you. Yeah? Uh, so in what, what we do in USM is we uh, equalize that. For example, eh? for example, uh, if academics go for sabbatical uh, with the idea that they want to learn about new things so that they can improve themselves, I say the same thing, administrators must go for sabbatical so that they can see what other people are doing and then they can improve themselves. Yeah? Mungkin bukan, mungkin bukan sembilan bulan, uh, mungkin tiga bulan, mungkin uh, lima bulan, depending. But the whole idea that academics needs to go out and therefore administrators needs to go out. Right? Misalnya, kalau academics are boleh buat research, I told them the uh, administrators must do research as well. Because you are sitting on sometimes uh, a gold mine of data. Yeah? 35 tahun data you, you are in is upper analyze. That we can learn something about it. So there must be research grant for you to do research and you also can contribute in that particular sense. Eh? Kalau academics can be a dean, taking an administrative post, I think administrator can also teach. So with you, with your, with your background, you can also teach in one of the kulia, one or two uh, uh, courses that is more inclined to your interests, then that can be allowed. So the moment we equalize this, then it is context of I'm more superior than you are, I hope can be minimized, right? So we need to work on a system, and I, I don't know whether we 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 are pretty, uh, we are ready to do that. We work on a system where the academics and the administrators are the same. Kalau research in the USM, uh, when they do research, they will bring the academics in. So there is this 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 almost like a siloed thing, lah. Academic, academic, administrator, administrator. The moment you work together, then you begin to understand. 
that the contribution of administrators are just as good as the contributors of the academics. So it's a, it's a system that allows this, and I think we need to rectify the system so that it doesn't go on uh, the way it is going on now. Yeah? Yes. Um, I think it ties back to what I wanted to ask earlier. It's about the Shura thing. Now, when we talk about leadership and you say, well, we have to have all those four elements, it's still one person. I think in Islamic leadership, the Shura is very important. And we've got to learn how to collaborate. The art of collaboration versus art of competition. This has to be stressed on, I feel. Yeah. So perhaps you'd like to elaborate on that. Yeah. This is where I was saying, you know, the concept of pemimpin. Eh? Pemimpin is about nobody is above one above the rest. All of us together. You know? So happen I'm the rector, but so what? You know, I will move with you and I'll, 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 I'll be with in your company. Uh, doesn't mean that I'm exceptionally different from everybody else. Yeah? And that's why I think in, in many of the things that I talked about, we need to flatten up the organization. Kita tak mahu this organization become so hierarchical that you don't, you know, you cannot speak to people that you need to speak to because of the, the way that it is organized. So, benda-benda ini, I think kita boleh mula lah. Uh, perbaiki dan bentuk balik semula so that some of the things that you are experiencing can be minimized if not eliminated altogether but I would feel the same thing I mean super juga this whole idea bila rektor masuk bilik uh, everybody must must bangun I feel very uncomfortable you know uh, that's, that's not what I what I intend to to have I mean dia masuk masuk lah if you want to bangun fine but I don't have to mandate you uh, rector masuk sila bangun. That's not. I mean, that that already put him in in a class of his own, which I think this is the kind of habit that we need to get it to get it off. Yeah, uh, and that's why I also dress very casually in my office, so that I don't have to be seen as another different group of people. Uh, I mean, taking another way of life. Yeah, so I, I would agree with that. But how do you make this happen? Is how we practice it. There's nobody can force you to do it. The moment you practice it, and it becomes part and parcel of our lifestyle. And that is, I think, uh, what we want to do at the end of the day. Yeah? OK, anything else? Sila, yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Sa'ida Tubaria, I'm from IBF. OK, uh, I think when you talk about uh, balance okay uh, i think being realistic uh, it takes time uh, it takes uh, exposure and maturity i think uh, all of us have gone through from low to up and we know how imbalanced we are when we were at a grade 41 when we have family and this and that yeah. so we have to get settled now that we are at a uh, uh, elder age, we are more settled. Maybe some may not be settled, but uh, most of us are actually settled. So we feel more balanced. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, as as it is, um, uh, you know, we have. Uh, I mean, the senior ones as they get balanced. And then we see the junior ones, the junior officers. Now the senior ones, ones, just when we are at a balanced state and all, we are already leaving. <laughs> okay, retiring. So I'll be retiring next year. So uh, I'm feeling that the the juniors, are, we need to guide them so that they can get balance faster, uh, in a general sense. But everybody uh, has their own pace. Now everybody has the same yeah. pace. All right. So I feel that uh, one, uh, just now Martinelli was saying that uh, we are feeling we are second best. Uh, I mean, second grade uh, in I am, but second class. But for me, through my experience, uh, I would say if we feel we are second class, we are second class. So we have to back up. Because if I think uh, through my experience is that if you perform well, because administrators, you cannot just think that you're second. But you have to perform. When you perform, they will not look at you second class. Okay? So you have to perform, you have to back up. And for that to also happen, 
I think the seniors has got to have this. I think what another thing that we lack is the session planning among the administrators. So we need to have that training, uh, that hands-on training, that um, I say the legacy and also the the hands down uh, thing. So I think that is something that uh, we haven't got it even uh, from when I was at 41 up to now. Um, everything we had to learn by ourselves through our experience. So I think that is something that the university has got to look into. Yeah. Uh, maybe your comments. But I, I would, I would, I mean, certainly the university needs to look. But something that you can do on your own. I mean, if you being a senior who have done this, could, could, could this be part of an, an, of an usra that you talk to the younger, how to actually, you know, don't, don't repeat the mistake that you have made, you know, how do you move faster into the learning curve, benda -benda uh, Yeah, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you all are sitting on a wealth of experience, and if that wealth of experience is not shared, then I think nothing will change in a very constructive way. Everybody will be repeating the same thing, and I also understand that administrator ni becomes a punching bag of everybody else. You know? Or deadlines on it. Yes, yes. I, 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 I do understand that, you know. I uh, tak kena aja, the administrator will be the first one to be blamed. You know? Uh, and I think that's a kind of, that's a kind of uh, uh, issue that I think you need to kind of uh, settle in. And I, I really appreciate what you're saying, uh, but how do you do this in a, in, in a group of so many people? Yeah? So if we can organize it in such a way, uh, this kind of a talk, mungkin, uh, share experience of how you actually ex move into you know, uh, your, your career path and how the others can learn from it, I think it will do tremendously well for, for everybody. So talk macam ini bukan untuk orang-orang yang, you know, I think you have got also a role to play in this, in this particular sense. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Saya rasa okay kot dah Tansri. Yes. Uh, penat Tansri dah berdiri tu. Yeah. Memberi aspirasi dan inspirasi. Uh, I think thank you so much Tansri for that. Um, okay, yeah. Kita close lah uh, kita punya session ni. <coughs> Tapi before that, I would like to invite Datuk Rahim and also uh, brother Inbizat to accompany Datuk Rahim untuk bagi sikit souvenir untuk Tansri. For, for gracing our event today. InsyaAllah. Jemput uh, Datuk Rahim dulu untuk sampaikan uh, buki of fruits kepada um, Tan Sri. Oh, comel je fruits dia. Uh -uh. Okay. Terima kasih Datuk. Uh, and now I would like to invite our president, uh, Professional Management Association, Brother Ilmizat, to hand over this book. Um, uh, produced but uh, in collaboration um, with Masti, Majlis... Um, Persatuan Universiti Awam Malaysia dengan Akademi Pendidikan Tinggi ACAP. Uh, the book was produced last year. Uh, it has like 21 articles uh, coming from various um, administrators of Universiti Awam Malaysia. So this is basically uh, for Tan Sri lah. Di kampai yang sebelum hujan. <laughs> okay, terima kasih Ratu, terima kasih Ilmizat, thank you Tan Sri, uh, thank you lama berdiri. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully, uh, apa may Allah grant you many for rewards and also good health lah in terms of uh, leading us in UIA, insyaallah. Terima kasih Tan Sri.
Okay, uh, I would like to thank everybody, the UMC members, uh, senior officials and all participants and members of PMA for your time uh, uh, attending this uh, session. Inshallah, we will be having, we will be having uh, more sessions uh, in future, inshallah, for all our benefits. So let's uh, close our session today with Tasbih Kafarah and Suratul As. With that, wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, can we have uh, just a group photo? Ah, okay, dah, dah, dah. Okay, uh, alhamdulillah, Tan Sri has given a green light. We will share the slides, insyaallah, to all. Uh, later. Okay. Kita ada group uh, photo sekejap boleh? Terima kasih. Kita minta all participants ke depan just uh, apa uh, stand behind um, our ma uh, top management.